run towards forgiveness from your Lord. What that implies for you and I, is first of all, you don't run towards something that you don't need. You and I, we never run towards something that we don't need. You rush to work because you need to get there on time. You rush, you hit the books because you need to pass the exam. We rush to things when we need them. So first of all, we need to acknowledge that we are in need of Allah's forgiveness. And who will realize that they need to be forgiven by Allah, except the one who realized they've done something wrong. The first thing the believer has to internalize, no matter if we are good Muslims, we are not free of sin. We are not free of disappointing the, the standards Allah has set for us. After all, it is Allah who says about all of humanity, including the Muslims, مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They didn't appreciate Allah like He deserved to be appreciated. The first thing He tells us, run towards forgiveness from your Lord. سَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And the second incentive, run towards these, this garden, this Jannah, whose expanse, whose real estate, whose size is comparable to the heavens and the earth combined. You know, this hits home when you get a little older. When you're younger, you're not gonna understand and appreciate the power of these words. But those of you that are older, those of you that are married, those of you that have kids, you will appreciate this. When you're younger, you don't care about money, not so much. So long as you have clothes on your back, whatever, it's all good. You can live in an apartment, you can roommate with five other guys, it's all good, no problem. When you get married, you say, I need to move out to a house. I can't be in that apartment anymore, we need to buy a property. And it should be in a good neighborhood. And if this one's not the right size, we need something a little bigger. And the kids are growing older, we need something with more bedrooms. What about a backyard? What about this? What about that? We run towards a house. We run towards permanent residence. We don't want to stay in temporary housing. We want to stay in permanent residence. It's a status of, of stability. So Allah Azza wa Jal offers us stability. Run towards this garden. This amazing real estate. Which the square footage is huge. It's the expanse of the heavens and the earth. And who has this been prepared for? Uiddat lil muttaqeen. These are the people. It has been prepared for those who are truly cautious, afraid, careful. These are the muttaqeen. Who are these muttaqeen? Allah Azza wa speaks about the people of taqwa all the time. But in this passage, there are some specific attributes that I want us to try and remember and implement, inshaAllah ta'ala. What good are these reminders if they don't affect our life? الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ This is the first attribute of the people of taqwa, he says. Those who spend in ease, in times that are easy, and in times that are difficult. Of course here, spending implies spending for the sake of Allah. Investing in that real estate that you get later on. You don't get any pictures of that real estate yet. There are no brochures, there's only trust. You have to trust the one selling it to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any other salesman tries to sell you something without showing you the product, you say, I don't trust you man. But Allah Azza wa Jalla is selling us. هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ tijara? Should I tell you of a sale? فَاسْتَبْشِرُوا بِبَيْعِكُمْ Congratulations on its trade agreement that you've made. Allah is selling us something, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why would Allah Azza wa need to sell us something? It's not like we need, Allah, you know when you buy and sell, there's an exchange. But everything we own is Allah's too. So the selling doesn't make any sense, He's our owner too. But Allah Azza wa speaks to us in terms we will understand, because human beings are greedy. When it comes to business deals, our ears open up. Really, there's a good deal? I can get something out of this? So Allah Azza wa speaks to us in, in the terms we understand. In the terms that, are in, that incentivize things for us. So Allah Azza wa here says, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ Those who spend, when it's easy to spend, and when it's hard to spend. And what is it that they spend? Allah didn't say amwalahum here. He didn't say amwal. He says amwal and, and wealth and assets in other places. In this passage, he, meant, he didn't mention it. It includes wealth, but it includes time. It includes your youth. It includes your energies. It includes your priorities. It includes your planning. You give that up for the sake of Allah. You sacrifice things for the sake of Allah. You've invested things for the sake of Allah. Anfaqa literally means to lose something. To let go of something. So we let go of the things that which we love. And we let, let them go for the sake of Allah to acquire this attribute of taqwa. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ This is the first characteristic. Now listen to the second one. It, maybe you could say, I don't know, I don't have anything to give. I don't have any money. But the next attribute, all of us can manage. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ 
Allah says those who swallow their anger. Those who swallow anger. And the wording is very very powerful. Kadama is actually to swallow. Now there's one thing, you know when you're chewing food, if I'm chewing food, you could see my cheeks moving. Right? And you could tell that there's something in my mouth. But if I swallow it, then would you know that I've eaten something? No, it disappears. By using the words, Al-Kadhimeen al ghayth Allah Azza wa has illustrated that we have to have such a good control over our temper that when you do come across something that makes you upset, then when you do get into a disagreement with someone entirely obnoxious, as upset as that makes you, not only do you have to be quiet, you can't even show the anger on your face. You have to swallow it as though it's not even there. The imagery is incredible. You have to have this self-control. And this self-control is increasingly difficult, especially for younger people. We're hot-blooded, you know. Somebody says something we don't want to hear, and our face fires up. For those of you that are younger and you play sports, you're playing basketball, somebody fire, you know, fouls you. Or somebody blocks your shot or something, immediately your, your cheeks turn red, you have to exact revenge. Right? How easily we get angry. You're driving your car, somebody cuts you off, and my God, this is the end of the world. Right? Your dignity has all just been, just been uh, compromised. You must cut him now. Right? Well, kaldi mean al This is an attribute of a believer. And the ism fa'il is used. In English, we call it the act of participle. Simply speaking, what that means is they do this all the time. They do it all the time. There are all these opportunities to get angry. Little things, little things at work, little things at the home. Easily the, the wife gets angry at the husband. Very easily the husband gets angry at the wife. Little, little things make you, make you angry at the children. Learn to swallow your anger. Become a person that perseveres through these things. If little things annoy us, if little, little things get angry at us, you know, make us upset, how do we expect Allah Azza wa to forgive our big sins? We expect from Allah that He doesn't get angry at us. And yet here we are exacting anger at every little thing. It shows a lack of restraint. So, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ And the second, the next attribute, وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ Very difficult. They forgive people out of love. Not غَافِرِينَ Not غَافِرِينَ عَافِينَ غَافِرِ is someone who forgives. But عَاف is someone who forgives out of love. You know when you forgive someone and they offend you and you forgive them? First of all, most people say, Brother, I know that was a nice khutbah and I know I should forgive but my situation is special. You don't understand, this guy was really messed up. He doesn't deserve forgiveness. By the way, you never forgive someone who deserves it. By definition, forgiveness means to give it to somebody who doesn't deserve it. And you're not forgiving for them. You're not exacting forgive. you're not giving them forgiveness because they want it. Or because they deserve it. You're doing it for yourself because you want to be in this list. You want to be among these people that are considered muttaqeen. That's why they forgive people. Especially those who work for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. If you volunteer at a masjid or at an Islamic organization, especially in the situation of family, there's a lot of feuds, there's a lot of things that come up and people get friction among each other. This is where shaitan wants friction. Inna shaitana yanzahu baynakum. Among yourselves, shaitan will no doubt, he will try to cause dissent among you. And these are the times we have to remember وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ You know the Sahaba understood this really beautifully well. Hassan radiallahu anhu is one time, he's sitting there and his servant brings him drink. And when he was pouring the drink, he dropped it. He dropped the drink. Of course this upset the, the Sahabi radiallahu anhu. So immediately he recited this ayah. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ Those who suppress their anger. Those who swallow their anger. Hassan says, I've swallowed my anger. He heard the ayah, he said, okay, I'm not upset any, anymore. The servant continues to recite, he says, عَنِ النَّاسِ And they lovingly forgive people. He says, I forgave you too. Then he, then he recites the end of the ayah, Allah says, وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ It is Allah who loves those who excel. Who excel in their religion, who excel in their consciousness of Allah. He says, go, you're a free man. He set him free. Because just because he heard the ayah, these ayat are supposed to exact change in our behavior. So here we have three things Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالْضَرَّاءِ Those who spend when it's easy and when it's hard. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ Those who suppress their anger consistently. And then وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ and those who pardon people out of love. And here it implies also out of love of Allah. One thing about forgiving people, because it seems to be a big problem for Muslims. 
We're very nice to the secretary at work and to the boss. When we come to the masjid, we come with a frown. There's a problem. That brother, yeah, he's nice. May Allah 